It's time for How to Draw with Levi Smith, and today we are drawing a scarecrow. First thing we're going to do is draw a circle. Add the bottom half of a triangle over the top half of the circle. Draw this one line up, creating two sides of a second triangle. From the top of that, draw out another line for the bend of the hat. Complete the second triangle side before adding the final line of the third triangle. Add a center line down to the circle and add an eye line after that. This center line, I'm not drawing it through the hat mostly because it's just for the face. To start off with the eyes, we want to draw a wide V that connects into the middle to the intersection of the center line and this eye line here. This is the top of the eyes. Draw another wide V below that one. And I start this one from the outside towards that center line. Add the bottom of the mouth. From here, we add in more triangles under the head. These are basically the opening of the sack that the scarecrow's head is made of. They don't have to be perfect. Next, we add the bottom parts of the eyes, completing these triangle shapes here, connecting them to the eye line. Keep in mind all the elements on the left side of the center line should be a little bit smaller than the elements on the right side of the center line. This actually will do a lot towards creating a three quarter kind of view for the face itself. And that just generally makes it more interesting. Next, we'll add an underside to the hat, bringing these other lines here behind the head. We're gonna add a simple neck, just a few lines here to show basically what it is a wooden post. All right, now let's add some details. We're gonna add some straw hair coming out of his hat. Just with these simple lines coming out, they are really close parallel lines, kind of like straws or uh, sticks or something like that, you know? Try to keep in mind the, you know, what it is exactly that you're drawing when you're drawing it, and that'll help you represent it a lot better. Um, one of the things is these lines for the hair, for the straw hair, should point to the top of the scarecrow's head. And then don't forget to add a few different lengths of the straws. And don't worry about uh, adding in a little bit of randomness. You know, go ahead and do that. Add some creases down here on the bottom of the sack where it bunches up where uh, these creases kind of show where we've tied off the sack for the scarecrow head. And generally try to keep these creases towards the back of the head as a detail element. We don't necessarily need these things um, getting in the way of stuff in the face part of the, the head. This is also a good point to reinforce your lines, making different lines darker that you want to keep. Next, we're going to add a hat band. I made this one a little bit heavier to show that it could be like a scarf or something thicker like that. Um, the sides of the band should come up and off the edge of the hat, past that line. It'll create some thickness and some volume to all these forms. Add small fold curves into the band, that hat band, that follow the curve of the brim of the hat. There's le at least most of the curves of the hat itself. This helps to establish the perspective of the piece generally. Add some other details to the hat, such as patches, some simple dashes for uh, just to show some stitching on these simple little patches and stuff. And these kinds of extra details can be a lot of fun and add a lot of character and personality to your piece. Don't forget, as I go, I generally reinforce a few lines here and there and stuff, especially when I've gotten more certain that those are the lines that I'm going to be using for the final image. To do these teeth, just fill the mouth with the vertical lines, just straight up and down. I made them really narrow and close to each other here just to make sure that the scarecrow looks a little extra creepy. For the top and bottom teeth, I start it at the center line and draw it out to the edge of the mouth, giving the top teeth more room than the bottom. And then of course, you know, more line reinforcement adding in some small details and stuff. Not all your lines have to be perfectly smooth or continuous. You can have intentional little jumblies and edges and nicks and stuff in, in your uh, line art that will add a lot of character to the end, uh, uh, to the end result. We're going to add more straw elements as well coming from the hat band. Um, when you reuse elements like this throughout a piece, it helps to reinforce and establish patterns and stuff that, uh, 
speak a lot towards the piece itself and character. Let's darken in and reinforce these eyes. You want to start by making the eye shapes bolder. Thicken these lines very carefully though. Make sure not to make the white parts too filled in or, or too small by doing the shading. Um, I will uh, I will thicken the line away from the whites of the lines on the bottom parts, on these two bottom edges. And then for the top of the eye line, I'll work towards the white of the eye. That way I preserve the eyebrow line and it kind of deepens the, uh, uh, the eye socket a bit there. We're just going to fuss over some of these uh, details and stuff here with this mouth. And we're going to speed things up a little bit here in this next section as I start to add a bit of shading and hatching. I'm going to spend a minute here darkening the underside of some of these elements, especially under the head. This gives the drawing a subtle feeling of weight and dimension. Also, we're going to fill in this underside of the hat that will separate the underside from the above side quite a bit, create a lot of dimension and depth and volume to these uh, to these elements. We're going to add a few other details here and there and then add another patch to this hat. And I'm going to thicken the bottom edge of this hat brim, basically for the same reason. But I do want to think of these lines as having a certain dimensionality to it where there's the the top side of the line, the bottom side of the line, just because that does end up having a, a huge impact. I'm going to thicken up some other lines here again for depth. And really to kick off the shading, I'm going to add a little light source here. This is just to help us understand where our shadows go. I like to generally put it above and a little to the right. That way, as the lighting comes down, it is a more common light source that we deal with in real life. Next, I'm gonna add these other thin light lines here. These are gonna mark off where my shadows will fall and kind of separate the forms and stuff. Um, this will also give us a little bit more volume to these forms, and that's really what a lot of the shading is, uh, is meant to do. Notice that the angle of my hatch marks as I shade this in they all kind of follow the same direction of the Scarecrow's general sight line. Um, this all gives a bit of like directional energy, a, a subtle bit of dynamic to the drawing that can be really, really powerful. But also barely noticeable. And of course, shade under the brim of the hat. Um, we're going to avoid these little spaces in the straw and everything. We want those elements to pop out on their own darken the underside of the head some more and add just a bit of cross hatching into the darker parts. This cross hatching is just when you make those parallel lines going uh, perpendicular uh, against them another pass and a couple of spots here and there will just build up another like level of shading and stuff um, without having to worry about any kind of gradations or blending. Next, thicken the underside of the top mouth line, just a bit thicker in the corners and a little under that upper teeth line. For the same thing, this just creates volume, creates a little bit of contrast and some subtle interest in these elements of the drawing. This is a particularly important and, and can be overlooked element here is I'm going to thicken up the outer edges of the whole drawing overall, just the outside edges. That's going to tie everything together, kind of put it in like a capsule, encapsulate it in a way. Everything will just feel more contained, uh, more cohesive. And, and it's a really, really powerful effect to do to your pieces when you're finishing them up.
And then that's it. This is our creepy scarecrow. Thanks for following along, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, why don't you give it a like and a subscribe and to catch more of my how to draw videos. And uh, we'll catch you later.